Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and I've got another technique for you today. This is my stepping stone card technique where we are going to layer up. So we've got three layers on this card. It looks beautiful. It's still able to be put into an envelope reasonably flat, but you've got so much dimension going on here. I absolutely love this effect. So follow along with me. Everything I've used is linked down below. I'm actually focusing on my new textures monoprint collection today for these stamps and this die. So the items that we're going to be using to create this card are from my brand new textures monoprint collection. These are the hexagons. We also have diamonds and we have the Moroccan style tile um, also with the cover plate uh, die and the stamps as well. So you could do this in various different shapes, but I love this stepping stone technique with the hexagons. So we're going to be, like I say, using the cover plate die. This is a five by seven inch die, obviously much larger than it shows on the packet. And then we've got all of the stamps. Now I'm going to be focusing on the outline stamps for this one. Uh, might use the half tone, the ombre one as well, uh, but I'm probably not going to worry so much about the solid ones for this, this time anyway. Uh, I might recreate it with those ones instead. But essentially these stamps are layering. So for example, the matched pairs will layer on top of each other so you can stamp in two tone colors there. So starting to build up the frame, which actually forms the second layer of the card in the end, uh, I've got myself a black card base. I'm going with five by seven because it's easier than chopping this down. I have cut the cover plate die from black cardstock and then I've also cut it again from adhesive foam. So this is the Creative Craft Products adhesive foam. You get three sheets in there. It's adhesive back and front. Uh, this is um, A5 in size, so but you can get a little bit around the edge. You can save this and use it elsewhere. Now, when I cut this, well, I've used black because I'm using a black card base. There's also white available. But when I cut this, I try to take it out of the die and leave everything inside the uh, sheet. Nothing falling out, hopefully. And it's quite easy with foam to keep that in there. This makes it so much easier for adhering your black, your die cut here. So with everything still in place, I'm going to just gently peel off the um, backing or of the part that I want to stick down like so, nice and came away nice and easily. And then I'm going to place my die over the top. The beauty of this is that it is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way round I do it. I'm focusing on the two corners first, and that should lay over the top absolutely perfectly. Now I can pop this out, but what you might also want to do, um, or you definitely want to do to create the stepping stone look, is to save any of these hexagons that you pop out from the centers. So pop those away and just pop them to the side for now. So I'm going to place this onto my card base by peeling off the backing. Again, it comes away just as easily as the front did. And once again, just line up the bottom corners before you press anything down and the rest should fall into place nicely as long as you've cut your card. So already we've got a dimensional card base there. Now we're going to work on building this up even more. So I have recut this from white cardstock. I have actually saved the um, outline there, but what I've kept for this project is these. So all the hexagons that have come out from the middle. So let's put this to the side now. And we're going to be looking at these. Now, what you ideally want to do is position these on your desk in the direction that they would be inside your card. And the reason that they're not all just plain hexagons is this edge and this edge have the tiniest little nick out of the corner of the hexagon. And you'll see that on these. So we haven't quite got a point there. We've got a flat edge. So I'm just going to go around and position my hexagons. Now, for example, this one is a full hexagon. Okay, so that one is going to sit like so. So I'm going to pop these back into the pattern that they would be in here. I'm not going to actually put them in here because that means I've then got to fish them out again. So I'm just going to work my way through these. It won't take you long at all and you can actually do this when you're popping them out. Now I'm going to keep the smaller triangles from the very edge, but I'm not going to actually be stamping on them, I don't think, so I'm going to put them to the side. 
if I feel like getting that fussy I might do um, but probably not today we shall see but now I've got these in order I can just put my card away for a moment and we need to stamp on each of these so I've got my stamping platform and I've got my hexagon stamps so I'm going to choose these and, and make sure that they are in random order the patterns are in random order that I decide to do um, but I've got on here a piece of paper that I've sprayed with a self-adhesive or rather a repositionable adhesive sorry uh, so it's a temporary spray glue that's just going to help hold my hexagons together so I can put one on there like that and I can stamp onto that now and it's not going to move around because of course I can't put a magnetic um, holder on there or anything like that so making sure that this is on here in the direction that it would be if I was stamping so that's that way and then I'm going to take one of my stamps position this on the hexagon and then I'm going to stamp that with a clear embossing ink and embossing powder. So what I'm going to do is work my way through these hexagons, stamping them in gold and heat embossing each one as I go. And I'm going to place them back in that pattern as I do them so that when I come to put my card together, it's much easier. Now that everything has gold embossing on it and laid out in the order that I'm going to want it on my card, I want to add a pop of colour. I've chosen sponge sugar for this. I'm going to see how it looks. I might actually opt for Kitsch Flamingo um, or even pick Raspberry for a brighter pink, but we shall see how they look. So for some of these, I'm just going to pick out the flowers. So I'm using my stencil blending brush because I can just do a small area with this. So I'm just going to go in with the flowers there. That doesn't look too bad. And then I'm go going to also need to use a piece of kitchen towel. Because I'm using an oxide, the oxide does go over the top of the embossing. So I just need to wipe that away. So that's got a tiny bit of pink on there. Um, we'll see how that looks. Now let me do a larger piece. With this one, I think I'm actually going to do an ombre effect. So quite dark down one side and just gently fade that out to nothing so quite a bit more pink on this one again just wipe away over the gold embossing so that shows up again there I think that's going to be enough I think that is going to be subtle but I think it's going to be pretty enough so I'm going to do this on each of the different designs in a different way Okay, now to start adding these into our card and creating our stepping stone effect. What we want to do is have some of them flat down on the card, on the card base, just with a wet glue. I'm going to choose these ones here because they are spaced out. So ideally, we really want to have uh, one in each row that's kind of flat to the ground, to the ground or to the card but we will put these ones in first and then we'll go from there. So it's just a case of popping them back in because they're die cut, they should all fit perfectly. And if you've kept everything um, sort of in the pattern, it should all fit in with that little edge there, just out. So they're the stitched edge ones. Wiggle them back in, perfect. Then I'm going to do, I think I'll do another one that's flat to the ground or flat to the base of the card uh, I might do this this bottom corner here I think and the great thing is this can be completely random so uh, it doesn't matter if you've got two next to each other that are flat or two next to each other that are raised up really doesn't matter then I need to choose what's probably easiest if it is if I choose the ones that are raised right up so I think I'm going to go with that top one I'm going to go with this middle one and I think I might actually go for the same three okay these three raised right up so all the rest are going to be level with this so I'm going to take um, this one so these are the adhesive pieces that I said earlier keep them keep them put them 
aside because we're going to put them back in to our card. I'm pressing that into the hexagon there and then lifting, backing off and popping this back on. So this is now creating our second layer that is level with um, everything else. So then take a full hexagon for that top butterfly. And I'm going to work through all the ones that I want to be flat to the card. So there'll be three that are on the first layer, on the base of the card. Three that are raised up above the card as such. And all the rest are going to be level with the grid. So we're already starting to get our different layers here. But we need to add another layer. So what you're going to want to do is pop back inside the foam for these three pieces. I've got my three tiles here set aside. And then on top of these, we're going to add your three spare pieces of hexagon that should be, hopefully, if you've planned it right, um, the same shapes as these three. But these come from the, the ones that you've got laying down flat that you didn't put any foam behind. So you've got these additional extras. So I'm going to take the backing off of this one, just here, and apply this second layer. And this hexagon is from this one here, but it's the same shape, so I can pop it over the top. Then peel the backing off of that, and put that just on top there. Now by using the black foam, I've got such a nice look to that, such a neat finish. Now I am going to pop in back in the smaller pieces of white that have come from these triangles here just to kind of finish the look. And there we have it, a finished stepping stone card with a sentiment on top to echo the gold and the black in the card. And if I just hold it up at these angles, hopefully you can see all the dimension, the different layers that we've got in there. It looks beautiful. You can, of course, extend that with even further layers. You could potentially even cut through one or two to the background and put your tiles in the background. You could even raise these up with yet another layer of foam if you wanted to, but I just think that's really beautiful. So there's my stepping stone technique for your cards ideally with a cover plate die but you can of course do this with literally even just nesting dies if you wanted to so i hope you've enjoyed this please do subscribe to my channel if you have and i think you'll also like this video technique just here too take care everybody i'll see you again very soon